One early morning, Gordon awoke with a start. He felt strange, but he could not explain why. His driver, who had come to clean him before he began, reassured him. It's just ditch water, he said to Gordon. It can get into your mechanical workings and make you feel sick. Gordon was satisfied with that explanation, but it was odd was that he couldn't remember falling into the ditch, even though it had recently happened. The memory was fuzzy at best. I'm just exhausted from pulling the express as well, he chuckled to himself and fell back into an uneasy sleep. He drank of vague images, those of a mine and of darkness below. In these images, he felt a part of himself, as if viewing the events from above. He couldn't see anything clearly, but he felt strongly that memories didn't belong to him. Later that morning, Gordon sleepily brought his train to the junction. Thomas, who looked equally tired, greeted him with a smile. Long night? Thomas asked. Yes. I had some weird, strange dreams, Gordon replied. Me too. It was like we were back at the old mine again. But when I awoke, I couldn't actually remember being there at all. Gordon's eyes widened. I have the same dreams. Come to think of it, I can't remember falling into the ditch, much less rescuing you from the mine. What does that mean? Thomas asked. I don't know. We only just came back. I remember bringing you to the yards just before the Queen came to the island. I remember that too. But why can't we remember actually being at the mine? The two engines decided to find out themselves. That night, the two of them puffed up to the line which led from the big station. They rounded the bend that led to the mines. But they were met with cautionary signs which read, Danger! Collapse mine ahead! We'll investigate it from here, said their crew. They walked past the signs and towards the collapsed mine shafts. They came back a short while later. What are you doing back so soon? Thomas asked. Um, nothing to see. Let's head back. Thomas and Gordon didn't believe him. You didn't even take a light with you. How could you have seen anything? The crews insisted, but Thomas resisted. He sped through the cautionary signs and stopped at the edge of a large gaping pit. When he looked down inside, he shrieked. G -g 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 Gordon! Thomas cried tears welling in his eyes. In the pit were two mangled engines. One looked exactly like Gordon and the other like Thomas. Who, who are these engines? Gordon asked. A terrible feeling began stewing deep in his boiler. I can explain, a familiar voice said. It was the fat controller who stood next to his car with a light in his hand. I had hoped this day would never come, but alas, here we are. There were you, he continued solemnly. What do you mean, were? asked Thomas, distressed in his voice. We 
When you fell into the mine, Charlish, you didn't just fall. The mine collapsed beneath you, swallowing you whole. We tried bringing Gordon, our strongest engine, to lift you with the pulley system. But we misjudged how hollow the shaft was below, and he too fell into the growing shaft beneath the ground. But how could we be here if we're down there? Gordon asked. It's a gruesome chair, said the fat controller. We had a major scandal due to a lack of judgment and shaved face. We, uh, <coughs> shaved your faces. There was a challenged engineer from crew who had moved your identities into your new shells. The engines you see below were your former shells. You were prototypes. Thomas and Gordon didn't know what to say. In their confusion, they began to cry. That doesn't change who you are now, the fat controller said. You two are still of my most useful engines. We had given you a second chance. And we're avoided a scandal. We understand, Thomas said in a derisive tone. Soon after, the two engines slunk home, buffer to buffer. Everything felt familiar and foreign at the same time. They didn't feel whole anymore, knowing that a part of them was rotting away in the bowls of the mine below. They had only hoped that one day, many years from now, these memories would become fuzzy too.